Hello, how are you all? Did you have a wonderful, wonderful week? You know, it was a bit hot. I hope you were able to stay cool and hydrated. Tonight, we'll continue to ask the Lord to bless each one of you and your family member, and that He'll pour out His blessing, His love on you, and His wisdom will be guiding you, and may His peace and joy fill your heart. Tonight, we'll continue with Exodus. Tonight will be Exodus 31. The last few chapters has been about the instruction from God in building and establishing the tabernacle and the priesthood and the making of the priestly clothing. And this chapter, chapter 31, will conclude with the appointing of the master craftsmen and also with a Sabbath reminder that the creation of the holy space is incomplete without having the holy time for the people to come together to worship God. And when the instructions were finished, the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments written by God's own fingers on two tablets of stone. Now let's go on to read verse 1 to verse 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have specifically chosen Bezaliel, son of Uri, grandson of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. He is a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and in carving wood. He is a master at every craft. And I have personally appointed Oholiab, son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, to be his assistant. Moreover, I have given special skill to all the gifted craftsmen, so they can make all the things I have commanded you to make. The tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark's cover, the place of atonement, all the furnishings of the tabernacle, the table and its utensils, the pure gold lampstand with all its accessories, the incense altar, the altar burnt offering with all its utensils, the wash basin, basin with its stand, the beautifully stitched garments, the sacred garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments for his sons to wear as they minister as priests, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense for the holy place. The craftsmen must make everything as I have commanded you. The Lord used Bezaliel and Oholiab to make artistic designs and to engage in all kinds of craftsmanship. And this passage here is important for our understanding that although the master creator is the designer, but he looked for creative and skilled people to cooperate with him. He called these people and he gifted them and filled them with the spirit to participate and bring beauty into the project. Do you know he is continuing to look for people who would use their gift to cooperate with him for his projects. If they are willing, he will endow them with the Holy Spirit so they can skillfully craft and beautify God's project. Here, the craftsmen came from every tribe, qualified by the creative and developed ability. The construction of the tabernacle required all kinds of skilled people, spinners, weavers, tailors, dyers, metallurgists, silversmiths, woodworkers, lapidaries, perfumers, and tanners. 
in this narrative, the Lord especially chose Bezalel as the master craftsman, and he filled him with the Holy Spirit so that he has the appropriate skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts in making the God-designed tabernacle and priestly garments. God commanded the skill worker to make everything exactly the way he had instructed Moses. Now, verses 12 to 18. The Lord then gave this instruction to Moses. Tell the people of Israel, be careful to keep my Sabbath day. For the Sabbath is a sign of the covenant between me and you from generation to generation. It is given so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. You must keep the Sabbath day, for it is a holy day for you. Anyone who desecrates it must be put to death. Anyone who works on that day will be cut off from the community. You have six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day must be a Sabbath day of complete rest, a holy day dedicated to the Lord. Anyone who works on the Sabbath must be put to death. The people of Israel must keep the Sabbath day by observing it from generation to generation. This is a covenant obligation for all time. It is a permanent sign of my covenant with the people of Israel. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. But on the seventh day, he stopped working and was refreshed. The passage said, even though the work to build the tabernacle is important, but the Sabbath still needs to be observed. In fact, it has to be observed continually, generation after generation. Why should they keep it? It says the reason is God is the Lord and he is the one who makes them holy. So what is the relationship between the Sabbath and God making his people holy? I discovered some quite interesting facts and I would like to share with you. Look at this diagram or this chart. We see here that God was making chaos into order and filling the newly organized space with things. We observe the different days of creation are related to each other. Days four, five, six are dependent on creation of day one, two, three for survival. Can you see that? Day one, initially there was darkness, but God made light. So from the unordered become order. And then day four, he fills this light light space with sun, moon, and stars. And then day two, he separated the air and water. And then day five, he filled the air space with birds, the water space with fish. And day three, he made land. He separated the water so there's land and there's vegetation. And so day six, he filled the land with animals and he made humans to make the creation perfect in wholeness and completeness. God made the seventh day, Sabbath day, as a special time space to unify his entire creation with him. With the Sabbath, they are close ties created between divine and human, and human to other living things. With these interrelationship, all are connected to form perfection. Any separation of the above relationship would cause the breaking down of wholeness 
and completion, including the Sabbath day. In this wholeness, God made a distinction between himself and the human being, establishing the divine human relationship. He also distinguished between male and female and established a horizontal relationship between humans for the sake of unity between husband and wife. Finally, God differentiated between human beings and the surrounding world so that humans would rule and enjoy the benefits of the earth. In the midst of difference or distinction, God initiated the principle of wholeness, of unity, tie everything together through the Sabbath, the epitome of wholeness and holiness. Now we see why God emphasized again and again the importance of Sabbath. The Lord told Moses to remind the people of the gift of Sabbath. Why? It is because God established it from the very beginning in the creation. And that's where God grant the holiness on people, on human. The Israelites were to be re were, were reminded to remember that the Lord created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. And he blessed it and declared it holy. The people were about to begin the creation of the tabernacle with God's instruction. And you see the Lord made the earth as a dwelling place for man, for the people. And now they were going to make a dwelling place for the Lord. And to follow the principle of holiness and wholeness is very important. So therefore, they must rest on the holy day, the Sabbath day, even rest from making the tabernacle on these days. Because they were to remember the Creator is the source of all things. He is the unity of all things. He is the one that set things aside for holiness. And He set this day aside for holiness. And the Lord said, the Sabbath rest was to be kept. So you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. And later on, he also said that this is a sign between him and his people. And also, it is a reminder that he's the creator and he is the deliverer for his people. While Christians and Christian theologies, they misunderstood holiness in scripture. They took it as it is a religion. Holiness is a religion rather than a relationship to God. It is a gift. Holiness is a gift from God to unite his creature to himself, to make everything perfect and holy. The Bible said, I am the Lord who makes you holy. And this phrase or this sentence have been repeated in many verses. Leviticus 20 verse 8, Leviticus 21 verse 8, verse 15, verse 23, and Leviticus 22 verse 9, verse 16, verse 32. Now you know how important it is. God deemed the Sabbath day so important for the relationship between him and Israelites that there were two threats of death for those who did not rest on the Sabbath. In a sense, we can understand that to break the tie of wholeness and holiness is spiritual death, a death of relationship between God and his people. Sabbath was holy to the Lord, meaning it is set apart to the Lord. This day is not ours. Even after the destruction of the temple, 
Sabbath keeping remained the distinguishing mark in anchoring identity for God's people. The Lord said it was a lasting covenant between me and the Israelites forever. And we, are we Israelites? Yes, we are the spiritual Israelites, descendants of Abraham. Now, verse 18, when the Lord finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two stone tablets inscribed with the term of the covenant written by the finger of God. Here the Lord finishes giving Moses the instruction for the tabernacle that began in chapter 25, verse 1. And in this chapter, chapter 31, concludes with a gift of the law that would be a gateway to life for the newly formed people. He gave them, the verse said, he gave him, he is God. God gave Moses the two stone tablets written by the finger of God. This denotes the two tablets of Ten Commandments were written by God, by his own finger. That shows that he actually put effort and devoted time and energy to write the laws for his people. The next three chapter is about the crisis at the bottom of Mount Sinai, the unfortunate event of the golden calf. If not because of this shameful incident, the narrative would have moved smoothly to chapter 35. But instead, we have chapter 32, 33, 34, to highlight the importance of God's command and how vulnerable men and women are when they forget his law. Happy Sabbath.